Thanks, Catherine. Um, appreciate the, the invite. My name is James Sutton. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Elevate. Uh, Elevate is a analytics as a, as a service offering specializing in helping cu uh, customers and companies uh, improve their operations team through data visibility, and it's powered by Looker. Um, I've been working with Looker for four to five years now. Uh, like Catherine said, I spoke at a Beacon event a couple years ago in Chicago on the behalf of Finish Line, uh, where I started my Looker experience. And uh, a couple years ago, left uh, to create Elevate. And you know, we really built this company because we realized that a lot of companies were struggling with data visibility. Um, and while talking to them at conferences, they're really trying to measure the same things. And so how can we build a product that ha that measures all the things that supply chain and operations teams need to know um, and empower them through data visibility and through these BI tools uh, that have just gotten so much better over the years. So um, let's go to the next slide here. All right, here we go. So omnichannel retail is complicated. Um, now the more than ever customers experience to, uh, to be able to buy products how and when they want and they expect perfect execution. And, and people call this the Amazon effect. And, and, and I'm sure all of you understand that. I'm an Amazon customer myself. Uh, it's just so easy to buy things online, uh, get it delivered like the next day or two days later. And the customer experience that they deliver is, is really just great. And, but for traditional retailers or for uh, any omnichannel retailers, behind the scenes, that's really complicated, um, especially those that have stores, that have distribution centers, that may be doing drop ship from vendors, um, you know, th there are people, processes, and systems throughout that whole operation that are siloed and they have different systems. And, and there's really a lack of visibility from when an order gets placed throughout the fulfillment process of uh, through various systems, whether it's through a POS system or through a warehouse management system to when it gets shipped. And then once it gets shipped on how it gets delivered by various different companies, whether that's UPS or a same day delivery, or if it's pickup in store, uh, needless to say, like that whole, the whole the whole business model is is very complicated and and causes uh, you know customer strain when those things don't go well and so just having visibility throughout that process is what we're looking to solve um, and then on top of all that uh, because omnichannel retail and e-commerce is growing at exponential rate uh, transportation costs are, are increasing and so any of you that are working with UPS or FedEx you know understand those challenges where you know you may be given a cap and say this is all you can ship with me this year without incurring penalties or I'm just not going to pick it up. Um, and so the transportation side of things after you ship it from your operation is, is ever more increasingly complicated where you now need to maybe introduce more carriers in, into your network so you can get things delivered to your customers when they expect them. Um, and so not only do you need teams and people and systems in order to execute that operationally, um, but you really need all that data back into one system so that you can understand uh, what's happening throughout those processes and understand if you're if you're meeting those customer expectations. Okay, right, so um, what Elevate is, uh, tech, like on the technology side, is is really complete stack, and we call it analytics as a service. And so uh, at the top, a lot of it's built on top of Looker um, because Looker is, is so extendable. And so we've built these Looker blocks that sit on top of our Elevate data models that um, get pushed the same insights to all of our customers. And that's what's different from Looker from a lot of other BI products is that we build a uh, build this whole experience and code and and be able to like push it to multiple customers that are are looking to get those same insights. Um, but underneath that, you know, we've got our uh, the data models. We have we own all the data that sits into the cloud infrastructure, and then we have uh, managed pre-built connectors that that connect to uh, popular operational systems like IBM Sterling or Manhattan or Salesforce, and we have partnerships with uh, transportation companies like EasyPost and and uh, ProShip to get all the delivery events uh, uh, post shipment. Um, but what I really want to talk to you guys about today is is there's four key areas that um, that that we feel like you should be measuring uh, and and looking into in order to uh, deliver this experience to customers. Um, and so the first one is is orders and fulfillment. So 
Um, this is probably the simplest one, but it also can be some of the, one of the more complicated ones. And so, uh, how is demand coming into your network, and and how is that demand coming in compared to what you forecasted? Um, and then once it's in your network, you know, how is that getting fulfilled across your stores, your DCs, your, your uh, or through dropship or through other vendors? And so, uh, supply chain operations can be complicated, and and without the right visibility into where that demand is going and how that's uh, comparing against your forecast. Um, you know, there there are oftentimes surprises in your in your operations where you may get you know an influx of orders that the operation team wasn't expecting, and now you know you have a two or three day backlog, and it's taking you four days to ship it, and that's not really the customer experience that that people are expecting. So, how do you have visibility throughout your whole network um, as that demand is coming in, and comparing that to what the forecast is? Um, and then and then the another key component is like is setting a target or an SLA. So we typically work with customers to define what that means. And, and typically that needs to be communicated up front on your website. So you may have seen when you uh, order by 2 p.m. and I'm gonna ship it the same day and you're just gonna get there next day or order by 5 p.m. and it's gonna get there you know, in three days. Those are all SLAs that need to be captured and then measured against. So how often is your fulfillment team uh, shipping things on time against the SLA that you're communicating to your customer, um, which also ties to your delivery SLA. So if you save five days, how often are you getting there on time? So just really having that visibility into uh, performance against the target. And then uh, what's the power of Looker and the power of, of the data model is that be able to drill into those exceptions. So if I missed the SLA on 100 orders yesterday, what are those 100 orders? And and, and why? Was there a reason? Was it a particular item? Uh, did our operation team just not know about them? So really just being able to see this high level summary and then drill into the details um, is, is critical as you're trying to uh, really hit that 100% customer expectation that, that, that people expect these days. Um, The next one to have great visibility into is inventory. And I think that uh, this is typically a gap in a lot of comp co uh, companies is really just having real-time visibility into what is available for sale online. Um, it's just a lot of people don't bring this into their BI platforms and, and uh, in particular on a real-time basis. A lot of merchandising teams look at this on like weekending inventory. So I knew what the inventory was last week or I may knew, know what it was last night at midnight. Um, but really just having visibility into your inventory levels across your stores and your DCs, understanding what's available for sale, understanding what you're exposing. Like there are generally uh, items that you may have suppressed from your inventory because you've set safety stock levels or uh, you've turned them off online. So just really having visibility into exactly what you're exposing can uh, empower uh, multiple teams throughout your organization. Like you're promoting the right products when they come in stock. Um, you're not promoting products that are no longer in stock, right? Like. I mean, how many times have you gotten an email and you say, hey, I want this item, and then you go and click and go on the website and, and it's not there for sale. Um, so that, those gaps between like the, the marketing team and, and your supply chain team is, is very common. And so uh, just having the ability to have one platform that, that everyone can go into and understand what available inventory is as, as it comes in um, is very important. Um, the next one is really focused around uh, uh, exceptions and exception management. And so um, I'm going to start with cancellations because, you know, a lot of companies, when we go in and start working with them, you know, you ask what their final flow rate is and they may not know. Um, and, and most of that is because they just don't measure it or they measure it on like, you know, some analyst does it on a monthly basis or or whatever that is, but really just having visibility into cancellations is a very critical point, uh, part of the omnichannel operation. Both from a customer perspective, uh, I mean, I, I, I probably ordered uh, like hundreds or thousands of times from Amazon. And I haven't had one canceled order, but a lot of retailers struggle with that, and they don't have 100% fill rate uh, because they don't have the inventory accurate. Their operations team can't find, uh, you know, the item to ship or or other various reasons. And so, just having an understanding of what your fill rate is and what you're canceling, and then in particular about what you're canceling, are there certain items that you're canceling more often than not, and you should go and under, maybe pull those off the website and you can figure out those inventory related issues. Um, are there certain categories that are underperforming? Are there certain locations that are underperforming? I mean, especially when you're relying on stores to ship out merchandise, uh, they have uh, conflicting priorities sometimes and, and it's really an operational component. So how long are they to look for that item on the sales floor before 
uh, they impact that customer experience. And so empowering your store team, empowering your omni-channel operations team with insights as to how each store or each uh, DC or fulfillment location, and then with the item level details about what you're canceling can really empower great conversations to improve your, your full rate. Um, and this, this chart on the bottom right um, is, is typically how we, we present it to executives. So how is that, how is that uh, operational cancel rate trending? Um, and typically when people start getting visibility, it's pretty high. Like you have a lot of cancellations due to various reasons. And then once you can go and solve those reasons one by one, uh, it, it generally trends down. And so cancel rate is, imp is important because not only is that increased revenue that you get right out of the gate uh, because you're fulfilling that order and not canceling it, but there's, you know, studies that have come out that, you know, if you have a, uh, if you cancel something for a customer, they're less likely to shop with you again. Um, and then even if they do, they take a lot longer to shop from, with you again, because they're just not confident in you as, as a, as a, a company anymore. And so having visibility into, uh, that part of your operation is, is critically important. Um, the next thing is, is, is returns. So, uh, this is generally a black box for a lot of companies. They just, they focus on selling it. They focus on shipping it and returns is kind of just a wash. And, um, but returns can generally be anywhere between two to three to upwards of 20 to 30% of your revenue, uh, coming back to you on the back end. And so just having visibility into what's coming back. Are there certain items that are being returned more often and, and do, and linking that back to your operation as far as, uh, are you not marketing that correctly? Or do you not have the right size? Um, it just empowers a lot of those conversations to improve the experience on the front end because you know that a lot of those are coming back on the back end. Um, and then the last one that I, I really like talking about uh, is, is parcel delivery. I mentioned a little bit at the beginning, um, but uh, I, I think that <laughs> supply chain is really complicated and. And part of this is because of how complicated the parcel delivery network is now. And so uh, we have created a partnership with EC Post, uh, which is a complete uh, software offering where you can use them for label generation. Uh, and they have hundreds of different carriers you can ship through. Uh, it's all API based, but we use them mostly for tracking. Um, so you, we use their whole API ecosystem to get all different real time tracking events uh, about your packages uh, in, in this platform. And so uh, I think a, a lot of retailers have some visibility into what orders are coming in and, and maybe some backlog information as to what's outstanding and what still needs to be shipped. Um, but after it's shipped, it's kind of, you know, you, you wash your hands and you let it go. Um, but what really matters to the customer is whether it got delivered on time. So they don't care if you shipped it. They only care if you deliver it. And then the, the other thing about that is um, I think that in the industry, Narvar and Aftership and some of these platforms that have come out are doing a great job on communicating with your customers. So your customers know uh, that you've shifted and they know that it's on the way and know it's going to be delivered. Um, but that data doesn't necessarily make it back into to you as, as, a, as a company. And so uh, do you have visibility into all the packages that you shipped yesterday or last week or um, and on all of those exceptions? And so uh, that's a critical point is that, you know, this is the last leg of that of that order of life cycle is after you ship it, how long are those packages taken to get to get to your customers um, and looking at that by like where it's going and who's shipping it. So if you're doing multiple carriers, having visibility into performance per carrier um, and then really the most important thing is how is that comparing to your uh, your your customer expectation. So if you communicate with a customer two days or, or one day for express or five to seven days, uh, how often are you meeting that expectation? Um, and then having the ability to measure your performance uh, based off the customer's view of your performance. Uh, and then, you know, it, for those exceptions, once you have the data, so what, what you're not delivering on, how are you going to correct those? Are there certain operational decisions that you need to update? We have customers that uh, have have found a misalignment from the carrier pickup times to uh, to get into the network to when their like internal processing is. So the carrier truck might be there at 5 p.m. to pick up and 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 drop things off, but they're they don't really care about that. They're shipping until midnight. So really just changing your expectations as to when you should try to get packages out and onto that truck on time. Um, and then where in that like pipeline are, del are uh, delivery like uh, uh, delays occurring. And so uh, all carriers are not 100% delivery satisfaction. A lot of them have 1% of error. 
Um, and so just understanding what packages are failures, what packages are returned to senders, having visibility into all the, those details, and then you can really proactively communicate with your customers uh, about those exceptions. And where that really comes in handy is around critical holiday events. So uh, like a Mother's Day or Christmas, you know, I, I've ordered something on the 17th of December, and you told me on the website this is going to get delivered by, by the 24th. Um, you know, like as a retailer, you should understand if that's that you're meeting that promise. So then if you have, if you're not going to meet that promise, um, then maybe you should communicate with me directly and say, Hey, I'm sorry about the delay. It's going to deliver after Christmas. Here's a gift card, go into our store and like, you know, and buy another gift for your family member. And so just having visibility in that data can empower, uh, an operations team to, to really better commute and serve your customers and then also go and handle operational decisions, uh, operations teams and make sure that you're, you're delivering that experience. Um, okay. So those are the four key, four key areas. Uh, I just said a lot in the last few minutes, but, uh, we will jump right into a demo and then, um, if there's any Q and a, I'd, I'd be happy to take any questions. Okay, and this is Elevate, which is really just a, a white label version of Looker. So uh, what we just talked about was how you should be measuring your delivery performance um, with all of your data from different systems. And so what we have in this demo content is a summary of, of your historical performance through of delivery. And so one of the first things we talked about that you should be measuring is how are you hitting your customer expectations? So if you say five days on the website, what percentage of those packages are actually getting there in five days? So um, that's what we're measuring at 90%. And we know how many late packages. We know where the where you're shipping to and are there certain parts of the country or certain parts of the world um, that you're underperforming. Um, and going into more detail, um, you know, with, with Looker, you can start with great visualizations. You can also go into detail with, with tables. And so um, what we typically see is that with more uh, slower economy ship methods, uh, delivery performance is usually pretty good because you have a longer time period to deliver to customers. But um, because customers are expecting things faster um, and they may pay for faster ship methods, uh, though that performance in those typically goes down. And so just having the ability to see based off of what your customers selected as far as how fast or what they're paying to, to uh, deliver and then drill into those details and see uh, in this example, all 19 packages and all the details of, uh, of what you shipped. Um, so I see 19 different cartons. I can click here and, uh, and see all the different uh, delivery events that occurred and understand why each one of these packages uh, either delivered on time or didn't deliver on time. Um, and so by using Looker and by using Elevate data model, you're able to have all the information in one spot so that as an analyst, you can drill into those details and make operational decisions to improve your customer experience. Um, outside of just delivery information, uh, we also talked about looking at the financial performance of your uh, omni-channel business um, and really looking at it in terms of uh, operating margin and not necessarily just gross margin. Um, and what we, what we typically see before we implement Elevate and Leverage Looker is is that uh, a lot of marketers or a lot of retailers are really looking at this on a monthly basis uh, through Excel spreadsheets, but building a platform uh, to be able to see this on a more real time basis uh, really can drive some better decisions as to should I have these items online? Should I not have these items online? Um, because looking at uh, your revenue minus your cost of goods sold and how, how expensive certain things are to ship, you may not be making as much money as you, you may expect. And so some of the examples I like pulling out in this dummy data is that, um, you know, I've got five items here, all five of them I'm making uh, a, a good margin on, but after I uh, back out my shipping costs, my supplies costs and my labor costs for fill it, this last item, I'm actually losing 15%. So it really just encourages those conversations as to should I, you know, offer this only for buying light pickup in store, so I don't have to pay the seventeen hundred dollars to ship it? Uh, should I only offer this in in store for sales, or should I uh, look into some other opportunities to make this uh, uh, more profitable? Um, and then the last thing I'll show to you today from the demo for for Elevate um, is looking within the four walls of a warehouse. So. Um, 
we really like measuring all the details from uh, order all the way through the fulfillment process um, and then to delivery. And so uh, by by using Elevate and, and uh, the Looker data model, you can expose all of those insights uh, to your end users. So uh, this view, we typically are, are, are built for operations managers to understand uh, if there's certain gaps where you're not hitting your targets. So in this particular case, I've got a huge backlog in picking, um, and that's uh, resulting in negative performance downstream in my warehouse. Um, and so likely upstream, my orders are not going to ship on time, and then my customers may not get it on time. So really going into the details is, is what uh, Looker empowers uh, you to do. Um, and then Elevate is the, the, the means to get there. So using our data model and, and using our business expertise, um, uh, we've really built a platform that can empower both operations leaders and then the insights from more of an analyst and an executive level to understand how you're delivering on your customer experience.